Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I get into the guts of the review, I want to take about a minute to say I think the Fanpick community, as it stands today, is very lucky to still have quite a few both large and independent, small independent manufacturing companies making these wonderful little writing instruments. I think we are very lucky, and I think a lot of the time, especially me, I take that for granted. And I say that because, unfortunately, Nemo Sign, the brand that I'm making the video for today, unfortunately closed up shop at the end of 2019. Now, Nemo Sign has been in the fountain pen game ever since I started using fountain pens. I've seen a lot of posts online about their pens, and I thought they were this, you know, small independent powerhouse. They were churning out great pens, and they would be here practically forever. I saw a lot of good things about their nibs, which a lot of people raved about. And when I heard about them closing up shop, I was pretty shocked. And I'm only saying this because, well, obviously the fountain pen market is not as big as it once was, and I guess it is possible that in the future we might not have all these small fountain pen brands. So I think now, as we stand at the moment, we should take the time to, I guess, appreciate some of the smaller fountain pen brands because you never know, they might not be around for forever. And with that, let's jump into the review. This video is brought to you by my new fountain pens, the Artisan Cigaro White and Blue Rings. Alright, so Nemo Cyan Singularity, and I can confidently say this was Nemo Cyan's most popular fountain pen that they ever made. If you were in the fountain pen community and you looked at all the posts of Nemo Cyan pens, I could easily say that, you know, more than 50, 60, 70% of all the Nemo Sign posts were either how good are their replacement nibs or how good is the Nemo Sign Singularity. This was easily their most popular pen, and I think for good reason. This pen only came in at about, what, 20 US dollars, which is the sweet spot for an entry level budget fountain pen. And considering that it came in a very nice demonstration, demonstrator model. I think they had all the parts required for having a great entry-level fountain pen. Now, you'll see later in the, view, in the review as to why I didn't love this pen instantly, but from an aesthetic standpoint and just from a general standpoint, I think they hit the mark very well in terms of aesthetics, price, build quality, nib, I guess. You can see where I'm going there. Um, you know, aesthetics, I think they did a very nice job and it just pains me that you can't buy these new anymore. So, first of all, let's talk about aesthetics. Aesthetically speaking, I think they did a nice job. Unlike the Diplomat Magnum from last week, which was a whole different level of let's do something unique, this is a more refined, you know, more traditional style fountain pen. It's just your average fountain pen, and that's not a bad thing. Aesthetically speaking, they did a very nice job on the aesthetics. It has some very nice um, polished chrome finials, and the nib on this fountain pen just looks amazing. All their nibs had this beautiful Nemo sign butterfly on them, and just even from afar, I can look at it and I can say, that is a really nice nib. Even if it doesn't work all that nicely, that is a nice nib. So overall on the aesthetic front, whilst it isn't jump out at you, I think they did a nice job. And the cool thing is, even though that this is a bit of a bland-ish pen, the aesthetics of it work really, sorry, the ergonomics of it work really nicely. This is a very, very comfortable pen. So capped, it's 13 and a half centimeters long. Uncapped, it's 12 centimeters long. Posted, it's 14 and a half centimeters long. And posted, it's 15 grams in weight. And unposted, it's eight grams in weight. So I think those numbers are spot on where a plastic fountain pen should be. And ergonomically speaking, this is a very comfortable pen. 
Uh, when you post this pen and it posts really securely, it is very comfortable indeed. The pen is about 11 millimeters in diameter, which is very comfortable. It's a little bit tapered on the barrel, which is fine. And the section is a flared concave grip, which is just very, very nice to hold. What can I say? I enjoy writing with this pen. The only downside of this pen really are where they unfortunately put the threads. They put the threads on the section, not the barrel. And that unfortunately has two problems. The first problem is when you put the threads on the section, when you hold the pen, you can sort of feel these very fine threads, you know, pushing into your finger, which for some people, depending how you write with your pen, can be a little bit uncomfortable. But the biggest problem with putting the threads on the section rather than the barrel is if you over tighten the cap, sometimes when you unscrew the cap, the section of the pen will stay inside of the cap and actually unscrew from the barrel and that is really annoying and it's just saying that could have been avo avoided if they just molded the threads onto the barrel. Every other fountain pen brand does this. I learned this when I was making my fountain pen designs. It is a cardinal sin. You just don't do that. No one does it and the fact that this you know, got through the design stages is a little bit disappointing. But overall, from a design point of view, I think this is the only big, glaringly obvious design issue that they have uh, done with this pen. Everything else is very nice. Uh, in terms of the quality, this is a made in America. I believe it is an injection molded acrylic fountain pen and Build quality, you know, is very nice. They've done a very nice job. I've used this pen on and off for about a year and I've noticed no issues at all, except very recently. Uh, right here at the bottom of the cap, there are some very small uh, splits in the acrylic and you would, you'd expect that from very thin pieces of acrylic. But after a year, that's what's happened. Obviously, it's not going to affect the fountain pen at all, but I do think it should be noted. And if you are going to be buying one of these Nemo Slime pens secondhand, which you will be because they don't make these anymore, I think it is something you should look out for. Little hairline cracks at the bottom of the cap. Now, in terms of the threads on the barrel, the threads here are very strong. There's no chance that they're going to break if you apply too much pressure. Um, if you want to eye drop this pen, you certainly can. I wouldn't even worry about using an O-ring. Just go ahead, apply some silicon grease to the threads and eye drop it. And in terms of converter, you just use a standard international converter. No issues at all. Okay, so nib time. And yes, this is the thing that sort of stopped me loving this pen right from the get-go. Because whilst they do use their own made in Germany nibs and the nibs you know are very nice indeed the quality control of them is very very good and they write very nicely but the biggest issue that I personally have with these nibs is there's no flex in them they are hard as nails nibs and for me that is just a big no-no it's for this reason that i don't like hooded nibbed fountain pens which is why i've never been rushing out to go get a lamy 2000 i don't like hard as nails fountain pens and this is no exception when i first got this i wasn't the biggest fan of it but as i've used it more and more and more i've come to grow to I'm not going to say love this type of nib, but I've come to accept it that it is a type of fountain pen nib and I should just get used to it. And once I got used to it, I think I, I'm not going to say I really like it, but you know, I, you know, it's a good nib. What can I say? The nibs on these pens are really good and I understand why people were always recommending these nibs. They're very 
you know, they're nicely ground. This one here is a fine, and it is on the finer side of a European nib, which is nice. It's not as fine as the Diplomat that I was reviewing last week, but it is certainly on the finer side, which is nice. Uh, the cool thing with Nemo sign is you could also get stub nibs, which from looking at them were awesome to write with. But this one is a fine, and I've had no issues whatsoever. Flow from it has been okay. This is not the wettest nib in the world. It's not going to blow anyone's socks off, but when you're using it every day on cheaper copy paper, I think this is a fine, you know, it's, it's fine. It's not going to feather the paper that badly, and with a full um, converter full of ink, you're going to get, you know, a couple weeks worth of writing, depending on how often you use this pen. So, nib... You know, what can I say? If you like hard nibs, uh, hard as nails nibs, you'll like this one. If you don't and you're like me, you'll sort of be on the fence. Anyway, let's jump into a quick writing sample to see how this nib works. Hello everyone, welcome to the writing sample for the Nemo sign. Singularity. This has the fine stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using is just a mix, like last week, of Mont Blanc Permanent Black and Robert Oster's Australian Sky Blue, and the paper that I'm using is just run-of-the-mill Clairefontaine paper. So, quick writing sample. And as you can see from that writing sample, there were no issues at all with the pen. I've just recently inked up the pen, so the flow of ink is going to be a little bit more runny than it usually would be, but no flow issues whatsoever. I usually don't have flow issues. It's just usually it runs a little bit drier. But as you can also see, there is very little line variation. There really is nothing. If I slow down and press a little bit harder. Yeah, you can get a little bit, but compared to um, what I normally get from fountain pens, the line variation is pretty much minimal. So this is pretty much just a notes taking pen. If I try to get writing variation, line variation, here it is with no pressure, and here it is just building up pressure. No, no pressure, building up pressure. There is absolutely nothing that you can get from this nib whatsoever. And in terms of natural line variation, there's very little ground into the nib. The side strokes are maybe a little bit wider than the down strokes, but, you know, we're talking, you know, that much of a, you know, of a millimetre. We're talking about, you know, if you, you have to look really close at it to really notice any decent line variation, and that comes out in the writing. Very little line variation, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of the nib just my opinion. Uh, in terms of wetness, now I did say I had just inked the pen, but even so, that's on the dry side for a pen that I've just inked. In terms of natural line variant, in terms of reverse writing, sorry. Like, apart from the skip at the beginning, it writes very nicely for reverse writing, but end of the day, I'm not a huge fan of reverse writing, and the flow for the reverse writing is not very good. Okay, so how can I sum up this pen? Well, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than normal because they don't make these anymore, so I'm going to have to really look at it from a second-hand market standpoint. And first of all, don't ever pay for don't ever pay for them. They're not vintage yet, guys. They stopped making them last year, so 
don't overpay for these, you know, don't pay more than 25, 30 bucks for them or whatever. But in terms of getting the pen itself, I do think the nibs are, the nibs certainly will hold their value, especially if they're those italic stub nibs that everyone loved. The pen itself, I think the pen is a great everyday writer if you like tough as nails nibs. It all hinges on how do you like your nib, I guess. It all hinges on that. This is a very good pen. It's a high quality pen and it pains me that they don't make these anymore. But here's how I'll sum it up. If they still made these pens, I would say that this is a great budget pen. Probably top 10 budget pens to get. So um, take with that what you will. This is a great pen for the price, high quality, if you like hard nibs. And with that, thank you very much for watching.